Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Card Action. Today I'm going to talk about the part two of my 3NSX manual swap video. But uh, before we start, just wanted to let you know I'm giving away this headlight restoration kit this month to one lucky subscribe. Please hit the subscribe button, like the video, and hit the bell notification so that you can stay tuned if you are the winner at this month. All right, so just wanted to give you guys a heads up uh, with the video that this project took a little longer than I expected uh, that it would take me. I came with I faced a lot of hurdles, uh, a lot of issues and things uh, I faced that I thought I wouldn't. That's why um, throughout the videos you, you may not see a little bit of continuity because uh, I filmed it in different days at different locations where I was doing different uh, part of the job. Obviously I left a lot of stuff that I didn't videotape because let's say putting the tranny back in, I didn't videotape that because uh, if you need to know how to put a tranny back in, uh, this is not a job you should be doing. Um, in all honesty, I didn't know how to put a tranny back in. I asked for if, uh, I asked for help from my friend Jason, and uh, he did give me a hand, and he was a wonderful help. In this video, I mainly show the finer details. So what you need to do to install uh, the clutch paddle, because everywhere in the forum it talks about removing the dash. Uh, we showed how you can install the clutch paddle without removing the dash. In this video, I talk about the manual alternator wiring harness and I also talk about why you can use it in your automatic car. I talk about the vacuum hoses and how to connect them and where to find these connections. And that's pretty much it. And let's watch the video. At this point, we have already installed the manual transmission. To install the manual transmission, you need to remove the full exhaust from downpipe onwards. You need to remove the engine starter and you also need to remove the engine oil filter because that is on the way. This area is covered by a thin piece of metal. All you need to do is use a flathead screwdriver and you can pull it up. Here's Jason scratching his head and how to install the gas pedal without taking the dash off. So we separated the pedal from the brake booster and then installed the booster first. You need to cut off this small section of the cross member in order to install the clutch without taking the dash off. It won't really affect any structural rigidity of the vehicle. We installed the transmission with the shifter linkage attached. We installed a lightweight flywheel and we also used a floor jack to lift up the transmission so that you can safely bolt the transmission with the motor. So in terms of the electrical circuit bit, um, this is what you need to do so that you get ignition. Uh, it's right behind the driver's side uh, panel. You have to take the, the mudguard shield off and this you have to find this relay. Now this relay is basically hiding behind this unit. This unit is somewhere around here um, with two 10mm uh, bolts. You're going to have to take, these, take this unit off and take, uh, with the two 10mm bolts and then you will see this. So you're going to find this unit. So once you see this, uh, this unit has a connector like that. A lot of people, what they do is they jump it. Now, I didn't feel secure with it because once you jump it, it's still open to the elements and it can rust and whatnot. I took one of my quick soldering kits and just soldered it right away. And this kit is so amazing. Uh, check the link in description. Um, this kit is perfect kit to work on these areas because it's, it's going to be a pain in your bump to do a soldering job in this confined space so this kit comes in really handy so what this does bypassing this it allows you to crank because if this is connected to this wire is connected to this relay then uh, when you wouldn't be able to crank it with the manual transmission now let's show you the wiring harness in the automatic tranny the wiring harness in the automatic tranny is uh, it's huge it's, it has a lot of things going on in here um, you have the starter uh, and the whole thing connects to all different sections of the wire um, and then right here you have the speed sensor and here you have the RPM sensor now all you have to do is take the RPM sensor off because you don't necessarily need the speed sensor in my research what I figured out is as long as you have the RPM sensor connected you don't need the speedo sensor, it will uh, calculate itself. Just for a quick reference, 
This is the twin turbo manual transmission. I have an extra tranny. And this is the speed sensor. And um, this uh, calculates the RPM and the speedo for the manual tranny. So you don't need all of that. The next item I would like to bring to your attention is the wiring harness for the alternator. In an automatic vehicle, the wiring harness for the alternator has an 8-pin plug and the manual car has a 6-pin plug. So the wiring harness from the manual car right away, it's not going to work with the automatic vehicle. Having said that, I did my research, a lot of the vlogs and people who has done it quite many times, they said you don't need to change the wiring harness. So I took a... Uh, blind uh, leap of faith i left the wiring harness for the alternator the way it is and the car starts just fine these three plugs are uh, plugs that we unplugged because of the automatic uh, wiring harness so only plug that came from the speed sensor is plugged in here other than that there's nothing else plugged to the tranny so i'm trying to use the led lights uh, of the drill so right over here, there is a metal piece that uh, basically blocks this hole. So you just have to take a, a flathead screwdriver and pry up the metal piece and you're gonna see the factory holes right over here uh, for, the, uh, break, uh, for the clutch master cylinder to go in. Now, uh, one thing I should uh, show you, hopefully I can, I'm not sure if I can, right under the clutch master cylinder, this, I don't know if you can see, I'm pointing towards it. That piece, this is a, um, a clutch master cylinder booster. So the booster for the clutch master gets the vacuum pressure from this line. And um, on your automatic vehicle, this piece is going to be different. You won't have this exit. So you have to get this piece from your uh, manual conversion vehicle. Once you get that, uh, you just uh, connect this to the booster and then the booster wire comes to the clutch master it's pretty straightforward and you can do it easily like any diy massive undertaking that i have no idea what i'm doing especially jason has been a wonderful help uh, without him this job is practically impossible for a noob like me uh, yes we did have a hiccup and it was a massive hiccup and it was so stupid because uh the previous owner of my vehicle, unfortunately the guy passed away, uh, may his soul rest in peace. He had a methanol injection kit installed in it. He used to go to the drag track all the time. So um, what he did is he had a bypass connection right over here, toggle switch inside the vehicle. So when you turn the AC on, it won't turn the AC compressor on. It will only turn the accessory fan on. So you get an uh, extra electrical fan control in your hand. So if you really actually want to turn the AC on, you have to turn the toggle switch so the compressor kicks in. So what I did, I wanted to get rid of all these uh, extra wiring nonsense since I'm already working on it, so I got rid of everything. Once I got rid of everything, uh, my biggest issue was it will crank, I, we could hear the fuel pump and we could actually smell the unburned gas, but it won't spark. For the longest time, we had no clue what we were doing because uh, uh, by the looks of it, what I realized, he bypassed the air conditioned relay and uh, he basically bypassed that so that he can have a little bit more control on the, um, the AC pump, uh, a little bit more control on the compressor. But uh, that actually uh, cuts the ignition too. The moment I wired it, and again, I used my quick soldering uh, kit, and uh, voila. It started and it's run just fine, just like before. So, yes, uh, we had a hiccup and uh, I, it literally took us a couple of weeks because I really don't know what we were doing wrong and neither Jason had any clue what we were doing wrong because um, according to him, uh, he didn't do anything different than the last couple of times he did the manual swap. So, uh, anyway, uh, we're over the hump and uh, we're good to go now. So in this project, all I have left is uh, basically buttoning up this fender. Uh, there are a couple of wires hanging from the driver's side. Um, just going to need to uh, make them tuck. A little bit of cleanup. Uh, a couple of screws here and here. And uh, the biggest thing is uh, I still have to uh, 
The biggest thing is I still have to put the exhaust in and I'm, I can't do it alone, I need a little bit of help. ticking noise be was because Mr. Jason forgot a bolt. Now that's not only it. Uh, you see that bolt? Yeah, it's just sitting there. He didn't go through. Okay, back to the scoreboard. All right, so it was super hard to locate those bolts in Canada. Uh, I can of course order them from uh, Concept Z or Z1 Motorsports, but they would take about a week to show up. So uh, I reached out to uh, the local Nissan dealership and they were able to locate six bolts in all of Canada. And they were in Quebec and they overnighted it for me. The, uh, we got it here and uh, I put the bolts in, I torqued it and went for a drive. And thank God that ticking noise is gone and we all knew why it was there. And I went through the gears and it felt so good because in the automatic training, the first, second and third gear are so tall, you know, you're, it feels like you're always stuck in a gear. But on the manual, oh, it picks up so nice and so hard. And so I went through first, second and third gear. I pushed it hard so that I could hit the boost. And <laughs> the moment I hit the boost and I heard a noise and no boost and I was like, oh, Damn it. So I pulled over on the side of the road and I uh, realized uh, uh, we took one of the <clears throat> the couplers off, uh, uh, the the hot turbo hot side couplers off uh, to access to, uh, to something and uh, we never put it back properly. So uh, it was just snug fit, but uh, it wasn't tightened correctly. So once I tightened it and went through a couple of pulls, it was beautiful it was oh man i i this is what what, what i have been looking for and uh it's fantastic so stay tuned uh you're gonna see i bought another project and that's another it's going to be something big something huge and i'm sure you guys have already seen the the little clip i posted so stay tuned 